Turtle Turtletop here, and uh, welcome to part one of three of the Tinker's Construct tutorial kind of mini series within the Attack of the B Team tutorial series. Uh, so this is going to be on uh, three kind of different uh, three different sections, I guess. Um, I've separated it into um, these three sections are uh, basic, advanced, and other. And the basic is going to cover the basic tool making process, which is a main part of Tinker's Construct. The advanced is going to cover the advanced tool making process. And the other is going to cover the other items and uh, things that Tinker's Construct brings to the game. So let's start off with the first main thing of Tinker's Construct. And this is the seared, or the, uh, I guess the, the smelting, the, smel the smeltery, which is created of seared bricks and some other stuff. So let me show what you'll need. You're going to need some seared bricks, so that it's a multi-block structure, so you're going to need 9 down here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 on the bottom layer, and a combination of a number of seared bricks, smeltery drains, uh, you can have a seared window, a smeltery controller, and a seared tank. So you need uh, you need these things on the second layer, and then the rest you can just uh, round with seared bricks, so it's in this kind of shape. And that is the main part. Now, this you must fill with lava, the seared tank. And the smeltery controller is where you put all your things that you're going to smelt. And the seared window just lets you see what's in your, in your smeltery. So let me start off by introducing the three th books that this introduces. Materials New Volume 1, Materials New Volume 2, and material Mighty Smelting. Sorry, The main one is Materials New, and Mighty Smelting helps you with tool creation. Let's start with materials and you. Getting started and recipes. So you're gonna need, these are the things that you're gonna need for the basic tool making process. You're gonna need blank patterns, a stencil table, a part crafter, pattern chest, a tool station, a tool forge, and you don't need a drawing rack. So, and these are information about other blocks that this mod introduces, which we will discuss in the other section. Let's move on to volume two. Tools, materials, and modifiers. I will be explaining these tools and what they do throughout the entire series, so we're not going to read that right now. Table of contents in the Mighty Smelting has introduction, casting, construction, alloys, and recipes. This is going to be the main part of the uh, part one of this series. So we have uh, uh, so we have alloys, which is bronze, aluminum, brass, manilium, alumite, and pig iron. And uh, these these are the kind of like the secondary, I guess. Pig iron is a little stronger than our, um, uh, normal iron, I think. I'm not sure if it's really good or if it's not very good. I haven't really used pig iron much, but I prefer to use manilian, one of the main uh, really good tools or really good materials for tools that Tinker's Contracts induces. And you can get it by going to uh, the Nether and finding two cobalt and two ardite, which usually come in pairs of two. And uh, once you get that, that is the strongest material, and you can read that in the materials section of, uh, which one is it? Volume 2? Oops. Volume 2? Materials section in the table of contents in Volume 2 of Materials in You. So those are the books. Uh, let's start on with the first section, which just so happens to be materials. Now, here are my, uh, kind of main options I use. Uh, gold for, I don't use it much. Copper. Silver is okay. And some of these you may uh, be able to smelt, and uh, or usually you can. Like uh, sometimes I know a few glitches have occurred just for my sake. It's other mods issues, not Tinker's Construct. Some of these haven't worked. Uh, some of them may not work anymore, or haven't worked. Or I'm not sure. But uh, usually the main ones you use are cobalt, manilian, and ardite. And these three are the main ones that we are going to be using today. However, iron. And copper and silver and all the other ones that you can use are good as well. Oops, I still have that on. Uh, but, yeah. So when you're on the early stages of the game, iron is a good thing to use. And uh, there's a lot of good good things to use. But uh, let's get started with um, the strengths and stuff of materials. I believe they're in here. If we go to materials, we skip through these. Uh, we'll talk about that later. And here we start on the materials. So let's start with, uh, let's go through this. Wood. 
Seems to grow everywhere. Durability, 59. Not very good. Hand modifier, 1. Not very good. So, this is wood. Obviously, it's not very good because you can find it anywhere. And it's kind of like the most basic material. So, each material has a shard, a rod, and the material itself. So, the material is oak wood planks. The shard is stick. So, like half of it is kind of a stick, if you know. And then rod is just a stick. So, basically, whenever you. Um, when it, uh, we'll t we'll go more in depth on this later. Whenever you use, uh, let's say uh, here, let's get out some wood and a pattern. Don't worry, we'll cover this. Let's see, we get a, a a two rod, okay, and we plop down some wood. We're gonna get the wooden two rod and a stick, and the stick is like half the material because this requires 0.5 of material so 0.5 of the material went into making the two rod and then you get a stick as the other 0.5 so that's kind of how uh, how it works um how they kind of that 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 works so each material has kind of a half that's dictated by what the people at tickers construct say so let's go back into materials new and into the materials section so we went through wood and now stone here the shard becomes more apparent and we can see that the shard is actually a stone shard which is not in vanilla minecraft as you can see this looks the exact same as a stick because it is a stick and they're both sticks but yeah this is a stone to rod and the material stone as you can see the durability is higher the handle modifier is lower but the full tool ability is much higher that's 65 and that's 59 so that's it, uh, it's okay uh stone bound is a trait do not remember what it does, um, but traits uh, re reinforces like just it's it's better, and uh, it's it's better. It's got more more strength, and uh, the stone bound. I'm not sure what it does. I th oh, it can. Uh, yeah, this is what it does. Stone bound uh, allows it to be um, like uh, how do you say uh, repaired with stone, so you can just take some cobblestone, plop it down into the tool forge. Which we are, we are going to talk about all this later, don't worry. And you can put your tool and stone, and it'll automatically fix it. So, that's that's something that you can only use with stone tools, or if you have a piece of stone in that tool. So, uh, yeah, those are some of the material traits. We're not going to go through all of them. I want to share a few more with you that I think are interesting. If we go to iron here, we see that, um, yeah, we got all the durability that is, is It's just like the other ones. You got iron shard, iron tool rod, flint. We have a handle mod of 1.7. It is 171, and this is 250. So, and this is much better, obviously, because usually iron you can find more. But you'll see here it says requires a smeltery, and that means that in order for you to make a tool out of iron, you must put it in here first, and then use these casting tables with faucets uh, to to make the tool using cast. But that'll be covered later on in the video. Also, I forgot to mention up at the top there will be uh, annotations linking you to all three different parts of this part one, uh, which I forgot, also forgot to mention, are materials, modifiers, and the making of tools. And that that's really all that's going to be in this video because it's the it's the basic. So uh, yeah, let's get on with uh, the next part of materials, and that is strengths. And we've kind of seen that, but if you were wondering, I'll show you again. Uh, strengths are basically uh, pretty self-explanatory. They tell you how strong the material is. So wood is the lowest, and if we scroll all the way to manillion, oops, uh, did we pass it? Manillion, yeah, 1,200. So that is really good. As you can see, copper is only 180, and that's still a fairly eh, not an advanced material, but uh, but an intermediate material rather than wood and stone, which are basic materials. If we go over here, we see bronze, 350, steel, 750. Steel is uh, very good. Uh, it these all require the smeltery. Uh, an iron alloy, and this method for obtaining this is unknown. So, it kind of says that here. It, it, it's, it's interesting. So, most of these have reinforced. Um, I don't know if this, this one this one doesn't have any, I don't think. But, uh, yeah, th these are all uh, different materials, just with different strengths. And pig iron, the durability is 250, so it's not all that good. But the shard is a pig iron shard, and I have no idea why it's like that. Doesn't make any sense, whatever. But, uh, but yeah. Material trait, tasty. I don't know what tasty does. I haven't really worked with pig iron much. But, uh, yeah, that's that. And, uh, we covered shards, uh, a little bit. I want to just touch on that one more time. Uh, because shards 
uh, as you can see, stone shards can be used to make materials. If you have more than one, you can stack them, and they can be used as half a material. So if you have two, that's equal to one material, so you don't have to go get that material again. So that's basically the shards process, and uh, we can go through some options for materials. We've seen a few. Well, we can go, let's uh, scroll through all of them and see what we have. We have wood, stone. I'm not gonna go through all their stuff because uh, you get you get the gist. There's durability, handle modifier, ultra. Durability. Handle modifier means that um, it's kind of hard to explain. You know, I'm gonna get to that in the advanced video, which will be out. Uh, I don't know, sometime. But uh, in the advanced, we will talk about handle modifiers in more uh, strategic ways of making tools. Um, but let's look. Flint mining speed 5.2. Mining level iron. So th this mining level shows what uh, what kind of uh, wh what it can mine at most. So it can mine iron, but it can't mine gold. It can't mine redstone. It can't mine diamond. Th that kind of thing. Like the, the full tool. A form of wood found only in the desert. So this one's got a 1.0 handle modifier, and the material trait is jagged. So when you, if you make a, a a weapon out of this, you can uh, when you hit them, it'll be it'll do more hearts or attack more hearts. And the base stack is one heart, so it, it's okay. But uh, let's move on. Bone, you can use bone. For the, you can actually use a lot of string material. Um, so yeah, you can use a bone, you can use obsidian. Tough as nails, but fragile in shape. So this is kind of, this is kind of a good point. So it, it's, got, it's got actually quite a low durability because you're making that. Um, but if you use it in one, like maybe the, the tool rod, it's actually uh, ver very good because it's got three reinforced level. And it's raining. Dang it. Let's turn that off. And let's make it daytime. Uh, sorry about that. I can't record in the rain. It makes me mad. Uh, let's go back to obsidian. Oops. Yeah, we talked about obsidian. So the next thing is alumite. And this is a very interesting material, actually. This is the material that you use before you have, um, before you have manilian, uh, cobalt, and, and, uh, the other one. I don't remember what that is. Let's just try to find it here. Ardite. Yeah. So this is the, what you'd use, alumite, and uh, this is actually pretty good. 550, not bad. 715, not even bad. And it can mine cobalt. So that's how you get the cobalt. You must use alumite, and it's very, very useful material for getting that and getting into the higher level of material making. Or uh, sorry. And netherrack. This is made of what? And uh, the, the, it's not bad. 131. It's stone bound, so it can be. Um, repaired with stone and it can mine redstone so it's it's not a bad starter but I wouldn't recommend it for high high grade tools next we have slime uh, soft and springy it seems to last forever so 500 the blue slime however is almost a, is as good as manillion so this is a really good thing to do however slime is hard to come by unless you um, go by the uh, the slime islands that are up high in the sky you'll see if you're playing attack of the B team you'll notice or if you're playing with some other mods You'll notice that they are there, and that's how you get that slime. Um, so it's zero hearts. I uh, can't mind very much, but look at the look at the durability. Like that's a lot. So if you use it for the two rod, uh, maybe, and then you uh, and then you use I don't know. Uh, uh, let's see, manillion for the like pickaxe head. If you're using a pickaxe, that would be a great combination. Uh, so this is like crafting, so you need to make slimy mud, and then make that into a slime crystal, so that's four slime balls, and that can be uh, congealed blue slime, which is another item that we will touch in the uh, in the other section, because it is used in this mod. So it's dirt, sand, and then four slime balls, and then it makes slimy mud, and then you get this and slime crystal. Then we have paper, which is a material that's weak, but it can take a lot of modification, which it says right here. So what that means is that um, it's writable. And that means it's got plus one modifiers. And modifiers on tools are things that you only have so many of. So let's say the base modifiers is two. That means that you have uh, two modifiers. So you can add two things. And we're going to touch on that in the next section of modifiers. Um, but you can add two different things. And then if you add, if part of yours is made out of paper, you'll be able to add three. So that, that can add quite an advantage if you want luck. Um, if you want luck, strength. And, uh, and I don't, I don't know, auto smelt on your pickaxe. That will, uh, that, that'll work. So that's what paper is usually for. And then we have cobalt, ardite, and million. copper. We already talked about that. Bronze, steel, and these are alloys and pig iron. And now onto the second part of modifiers. 
Uh, we're going to cover this right now. I know we're going to spend a long time looking at this book, but trust me, we'll get to uh, the tool making process. So let's start with the first modifier of diamond. Uh, so this adds 500 extra, extra durability and binding level increased to level 3. So type single use and it's not stackable. So you can add one diamond. It'll change the look. It also shows what it'll change it to. Uh, adding them to the edge will seem to make them more resilient. So this will just add strength, basically. Emeralds. Affixing an emerald to a tool's weakest point appears to make it more resilient. 50% more durability. So if you already have a lot of durability, let's say you have a diamond on it, and then you add an emerald, it'll add 50%. Uh, I'll be right back, guys. One second. Okay, I'm sorry about that, guys. I just had to learn to it with my brother. Uh, anyway, as I was saying, uh, this is better to use when you have more durability and you want a little bit more. So 50%, that's pretty good. Uh, however, emeralds are kind of hard to come by because they need to be in a, uh, in a in a hills or extreme hills biome. That's what I was thinking of. Redstone. Uh, this is uh, this is a great thing that I use on almost all my tools. It uh, increases mining speed by 0 0.08 each redstone does. So add 50 to the boost is uh, 4.0, making a wood pickaxe equivalent in speed to an iron. So it's not useful on like weapons, as it says right here, because it won't really do anything. Only uh, only uh, you know pickaxes, mining tools. Let's move on to the next one. This is moss, and I recommend using moss on every single one of the tools you make. It is definitely one of the great things, and also in Attack of the Bee Team with thermal expansion, you can make. Uh, mossy cobblestone by putting water in cobblestone in a uh, liquid transposer and uh, you can do it that way so this is a great way it auto repair it slowly auto repair yourself when you're in the sun and uh, sunlight speeds up the process and this is a great thing it, it just repairs it like if you damage it a lot it'll repair it like pretty quickly and it's not and uh, if you use the right materials it won't even get damaged enough to need this but it, it's a great thing to have and I highly recommend using this and we'll talk about that in the uh, strategic strategic section of uh, of the modifiers which is next uh, but first let's go to this one auto smelt this is also a very great thing it's the same thing it, it, if you uh, mine iron ore say it'll turn it into an iron ingot and if you add luck to this uh, It'll that that'll work too, and you'll get uh, fortune. Uh, but you, if you add luck to a pickaxe that does not have this, then it won't work, right? Because if you have luck and you mine iron ore, and you get two, and then you mine two more, and then you get four, it would be it would be quite cheaty, right? You would, you'd have infinite iron. Then. So yeah, that doesn't. That's why in the op of options for enchanting in vanilla Minecraft, we don't have that. So uh, let's look at the effects. Smelts blocks as they're harvested. Sets mobs on fire for three seconds. So you can put it on a weapon, but I'll show you uh, another option for that in a second. Stacks with luck. So right, it'll work with luck. Not compatible with silky. So if you have silk touch, of course, uh, that won't really work, right? Because it'll smelt it and try to get the ore at the same time. So yeah. So type multi-use stackable no. Ball of moss is nine mossy cobblestone, and the lava crystal is four blaze rods, four fire charges, and one bucket of lava. So this one's quite expensive if you're in the early stage of the game, the fire charges and stuff. But uh, they they are, are very good. Let's move on to the next one with lapis lazuli and luck. So this is basically just adds fortune. That's all it does. Let's move on to the next one, which is quartz, and this is very good. So let's say you have a, a rapier right here, uh, and you add quartz to it. It'll make it'll add just add the effect of sharpness uh, of enchanting. So that, that that's quite a useful thing to have, and I recommend putting that on on your weapons. Uh, you can also uh, add some quartz, and then if you don't think you have enough, you can add more at the cost of one modifier. So you can like use double modifier of quartz if you want to. So that's kind of a neat thing. This is the thing I was talking about. Fiery. It uh, every five powder adds another second to the flame. So if you have five powder, it'll uh, set mobs on fire for five seconds rather than three than the lava crystal and at the I learned this the hard way because on the first time I added a uh, lava crystal in my weapon I noticed it didn't last very long so I added this too so now it sets them on for quite a long time so I would recommend just using this though it's a, it's a much better and it makes it look really cool as well let's move on to the next one of necrotic this is a very interesting thing however necrotic bones I would suggest using on the tinker's construct uh, hearts, heart canisters, which we'll talk about in the other section of this uh, series. But uh, necrotic uh, heals the player every time the monster is attacked. You'd be surprised that it doesn't work very well. 
Uh, I, I've never found very much of a use for it, and I think it's kind of a waste of a modifier. But if you'd like to do it, uh, it heals one heart per bone. So if you add multiple bones and you uh, hit hit a monster and you're low on health, then you can do that. However, in Attack of the B Team, when you're when you're fighting, you don't lose much health. It's more effects that uh, that hurt you. So I'd, uh, I I don't use this very much. However, it is a possibility for in some cases. So you can look into it. Silky. Uh, this is uh, basically adds silk touch, so allows blocks to be harvested directly. So if you uh, take in, uh, take a let's see, what would this sound called? Coal. It would turn coal into an ore, right? Uh, so, so yeah, that that, that that's kind of helpful if you want. Uh, not compatible with luck or auto smelt, of course. Um, yeah, so that's kind of a. It, it's a useful thing if you want silk touch. However. It, uh, it requires an emerald and quite a bit of string and a gold nugget. Ooh. Sorry, <laughs> I just got distracted. There's a big lightning bolt. It just hit down quite oops, quite close. Uh, but anyway, the Soka Jewel can be useful in some cases again. And uh, reinforce. Now, this is interesting. This requires an obsidian plate, which we'll talk about later, of how to make. Uh, and an obsidian, just hear me out, an obsidian plate adds reinforce. So remember that effect that we talked about that um if you make something out of obsidian or million or some any other materials that has the effect reinforced it'll basically do the same thing at the cost of one modifier so that that's an uh, interesting thing if you want your tool to uh, have more uh, more durability or stronger basically this is a good thing to add however it is at the cost of one modifier and if you want your tool to be stronger i'd suggest just making it out of uh, something with reinforced originally and then you don't have the cost of the one modifier uh, knockback. This is kind of an interesting thing that I, I've never actually tried, but if you use a piston, it adds a knockback to the tool. So I think that's kind of a, a kind of a neat thing, and it adds this little piston up here that uh, it adds knockback. I thought that was a really good idea. So uh, that that's basically the gist of it. It doesn't really do anything else. It just uh, I'll read this: attaching a piston to the tool and activating it at the right time seems to throw mobs further away. So basically, a knockback effect. It's multi-use as well. Now this is cool: a beheading. Working an ender pearl and some obsidian on the weapon has the curious effect of separating the target's head from its body. So beheads mobs, enemies drop their heads as a result. So this is actually kind of a neat thing. Um, I haven't experimented with it, but uh, it's, I'm guessing it's pretty self-explanatory and their head comes off. I don't know if it's a really cool animation or if it's just kind of like the head just kind of falls and it, it's just not there anymore. So I've, it's, it's an interesting concept. I don't know what... Uh, I don't know if you'd get, like, the head item from the mob, if that's what it would be for. It seems kind of a waste of a modifier. Again, it doesn't do extra damage. Uh, and I wouldn't use it on, like, a mining tool, because this is obviously only for weapons. So, uh, drop their heads. I'm guessing that's what it means, but I'm not sure. You can experiment with this yourself if you want in a creative mode world. Um, that's what I do for all my weapons, and then I see them in survival, just to make sure that I'm not wasting my time. But, yeah, that is the, uh, th that's the, uh, Inner Pearl and Obsidian. Let's move on to uh, Bane of Arthropods, and now this is an enchantment effect. So striking a spider with its own eyeball causes it to recoil in fear. So it'll kind of it'll uh, work better on spiders. Does extra damage to spiders. One to two hearts per level. So this is a thing if you're attacking a lot of spiders, you might want this on one of your tools. And don't forget, you should also make multiple tools in case one breaks or you have different effects on them. Just a side note that I thought I'd mention. Um, smite. This is an interesting thing. The raw power of uh, consec consecrated? I guess so. So it empowers your weapon, smiting enemies from on high. So that's just add smite. Does extra damage to the undead, so zombies and skeletons, I guess. Uh, one to two hearts per level. And uh, yeah. So this is how you make uh, concerted soil. So you have to make graveyard soil, which is bone meal, dirt, and rotten flesh, and then you smelt it, and it becomes conser consecrated soil. So that's that. Now this is, I thought, was a cool flux. Now, this is a very, very interesting concept. This is a thermal expansion, I think. Uh, adding a hardened flux capacitor or lighter energy cell gives a tool energy. The tool still functions properly with a cell capacitor. It has no charge. So basically, it allows the tool to be charged with rid of flux and uses energy instead of durability while charged, available from thermal expansion 3. So basically what this does is instead of durability, your tool has energy. And basically the energy, like you can charge it in, a, in an energy cell. Now that's more of a thermal expansion thing, but I'll just do a quick uh, explanation. So in thermal expansion, if you didn't know, there's energy cells. And there's leadstone, and there's redstone, and there's different ones. So you can pop this in here and it'll refill the durability fairly quickly rather than using moss i guess at the cost of one modifier but when it's uh out of charge 
I'm not I haven't experimented with this one as much either but if you it when it's out of charge I think it just starts using durability and uh, or maybe it doesn't even use durability it's just at the base so basically that's how it works and uh, yeah it's kind of it's a useful thing if you need to just charge it up attack charge it up it's way easier than just you know using that however it still functions when it's not charged so I've never used this I never found it useful for my needs but if you do then go right ahead and use it uh, then flux you can also add a leadstone energy cell adds the same effect now this is an interesting one that I always use on my tools using a block of gold and a diamond it adds an additional modifier so it's like using paper but without having to use that low durability so this is a great use um, a great use of uh, a diamond and gold block I'd highly recommend using it, it doesn't change the look of the material um, tool I know I've been mentioning that um, it doesn't really matter to me how it looks they always look really really cool especially with the moss but uh, yeah that's what the diamond and the gold block does nether star this is interesting additional modifiers uh, this does the same thing as that working the tool with the nether star gives you the ability to attach parts they would not otherwise stay so adds an additional modifier slot to the tool so basically you can use the diamond and gold block once and then you have three modifiers or whatever, or, uh, however many you have had now. And then you add this, and you can do it again, so you can have even more. However, nether stars are pretty hard to come by. So, you know, you uh, it's good. It's kind of a good thing to have. And that is the end of the different modifiers. Now, uh, let's go into here and look at some of the ones that we'll be using that I, that I personally use. Um, lapis. Lava crystal, ball of moss, diamond, redstone, emerald, uh, blaze powder, silky jewel, nether quartz, and obviously the uh, diamond and block of gold. But uh, yeah, those are the modifiers that I would recommend using mainly. Of course, you can look them up in this book that I, that you get this book originally, and then you can just pop that in a crafting table and you get this book. So that's pretty useful. And uh, so we've talked about the effects and the modifiers. Let's talk about strategy. Now, if we go back in here, there are, uh, actually we can just look in here. We can, we can see something. Now, there's not much strategy to this, and I'm going to talk more in depth of this strategy thing in uh, the, the advanced section. But, uh, basically, is, uh, let's say you have a rapier, which is a tool that allows you to strike much faster. So, this is it right here. Rapier is a special weapon that relies on quick strikes to defeat foes. So it goes really, really fast. And armor pierce, quick strike, charge boost, and special ability backpedal. So when you right click on it, you like jump backwards. Oops, backwards like this. So basically that's what that does. And let's say you have that and you have, uh, uh, let's see, quartz on it. It'll, it'll, do, um, it'll do much more damage much quicker. So it's a very effective thing to do. Now, there's not much strategy to this. You can think of other things to do, right? Like you can add, uh, find different combinations that work for you. Like you can use this and then that, and then they'll keep adding six because it'll constantly be on fire. Things like that, but you know, that's not really a big thing, and uh, you can experiment and see how it works for you. Like, everyone has different needs for their weapons, uh, whether it's killing players on servers, uh, different animals, uh, mobs, whatever, whatever your needs are. So, it's good to experiment with these. Let's get on to um, uh, section three the making of tools. Yes, what everyone's been waiting for. Um, so, basically, let's go through with uh, how to make, how to make um, patterns. And then we'll go on to uh, how to create um, casts, how to use casts, and how to make tools. So first, let's talk about patterns. Um, basically, you're gonna want to make a stencil table, and you can just scroll through here about which the ones you want to make. And let's say you want to make a tool rod, which you need for almost every weapon, and you can just click on it, and there, and you load it with blank patterns. So basically, what you do then is you're gonna want to go, you're gonna make a part builder and a pattern chest, and you can store all your patterns in here. And we're going to start by making a pickaxe. So if you're in your part builder, this is how you make the parts. So let's go in here. Or actually, you know what? We already have this. Let's uh, let's go in here and click uh, tool forge. You can make a, a, a smaller one of these that only has the basic tools. And uh, let's click on the pickaxe. So what do we need? We need a binding, a pickaxe head, and a tool rod. So we already have the tool rod that we made earlier right here. Let's go. Let's look for a binding. And uh, let's make that right so we have a binding and we have another stick <laughs> because that's a shard right this only takes 0.5 and then what else do we need a pickaxe head right so oops or whatever let's just go with a pickaxe head and now we have all three 
things needed. So we have these. But if we were to make it out of wood, that wouldn't be a very good, uh, a very good uh, thing to do. So what we're going to want to do is take some gold or brass. I prefer to use gold. Oops. What happened? I'll be right back, guys. Okay, I'm sorry about that, guys. My game crashed. Uh, I don't know why that happened. Anyway, let's get back into the um, the cast making process. So what you're gonna want to do is uh, just to recap. I, it has been a while for me, but not for you. So you make these by putting the patterns in there with the material, and then like that, and the patterns are made with putting blank patterns, which are, by the way, if, if you didn't know, sticks and two wood planks, so very cheap. And then once you have those materials, you could make the two out of the basic materials that don't require the smeltery. Um, which are these, the stone and the wood. But I want to make some better ones. So what you're going to want to do is uh, smelt down the material that you want to use. So I'm going to use manillion and iron. I'm going to use these two materials. So what you're going to want to do is look at how much each of these cost. So the tool binding costs 0.5. So that's one. And I believe the pickaxe head, what do you cost? One. So that's two in total because 0.5 plus 0.5 plus one is two. So basically what we're going to want to do is we want, um, I want the binding and the tool rod to be iron. And that's to be manillion. So we need one iron, because 0.5 plus 0.5 is one, and one manillion. Manillion, sorry. And then now those two are gonna smelt, and you can see by the bar here. Now this is your smeltery tank, and this is your uh, sear, sear tank. So this will show how much lava you have. Now just while we're waiting for this, what you need to do is you need to fill that with uh, fill that with lava. So you just take a lava bucket and you right click. And that'll fill up, but right now it's not low enough. I already did that. So once you do that, you can uh, you can uh, start using it. And if you have the correct, so like I said before, a seared window, a smelter control, and a sear tank. However, if you don't, if you didn't know what to do, you can always go into here and go into the construction. Oops. And it'll tell you exactly what you need and exactly what to do. Uh, and you can get this easily by just uh, you just take this and you put either uh, the same one in with two with a book or you put the materials new that you get from crafting this one which you get at the start of the game so you really can get it right away if you want so that's how you um, that's how you do that so as you can see the iron is smelted and it shows up here molten iron ingots one and eventually and uh, once this is done the purple manillion will show up you just gotta wait the iron shows red for some reason so now we have manillion in this so first of all uh, we're gonna want to make the cast by melting some gold. So let's just uh, kind of do about uh, six or let's do that. Yeah, that's good enough. Gold and that should melt fairly quickly. And uh, once that is, I'll show you how to make the cast. So this is where the casting table comes in. So we need to make uh, a tool rod, a pickaxe head, and a binding. So let's go over here and ooh, it's really laggy. We're gonna need a casting table, and you can right click these binding uh, heads and these items and you can right click them in and that's what you're gonna want to do we'll get to these casting basins later um, so wait that's what you're gonna want to do you're gonna want to right click that in and this is the seared faucet that you're gonna want just wait until you make sure that gold is done it is so you're gonna want to click on it and it'll go to the bottom and that's the next thing that'll come out of the faucet so now that you have that you can um, you can right click on the faucet and as you can see gold will start flowing out and it'll cool and now guess what you've made a cast this is your tool binding cast because we made it out of a tool binding so now we have this tool binding cast and we wanted to make it out of iron so we're gonna plop that back in there we're gonna right click we'll find the iron and we're gonna click it and it'll go to the bottom now that we've done that we're gonna click on the faucet again and as you can see red will follow well, that's iron I don't know why it'll fill this and you can right click on them and now you have your iron binding so you're going to want to do that for all three, and you're going to want to find the gold again, molten gold, and you're going to want to right click on it. Oops, that didn't mean to happen. Oopsies, put that back. <laughs> there we go. Now we're going to fill that with gold, and then we have the that cast, and then put the tool rod, and then that, and now we have that cast. So now we have those two casts, and I want to make the tool rod out of iron. So we're going to take, find the iron, and we're going to right-click. And then we have our iron, and I wanted to make the pickaxe head out of manillion. So now we're going to find the manillion. There it is. And put it to the bottom, and right-click. 
and now oops wait for the cool now we have all parts for this this is where the tool forge comes in handy because you can go in here you can click on the tool you want to make that you have all the parts for already which i showed you how to do and you just plop them in there and this is how you know which ones pickaxe head tool mining and handle which is the tool and that's everything and now we have our pickaxe you can see it's reinforced one because the uh, iron adds reinforced and it's five attack damage we can also look at the statistics of this by putting it in this slot and we can see the durability is 1,505.9 mining speed 9 and the mining level is manillion so you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna grab some stone and I'm gonna go into survival mode and show you how fast uh, speed 9 actually is so let's go to survival place down some stone here uh, oops, like this, that, 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 and that, that, that. So this is uh, a bunch of stone, and let's see, this is mining speed 9, manillion, and iron pickaxe. So this is not bad. This is, this is an okay pickaxe. With no modifiers and nothing really else on it, it's not bad, especially with only one, one piece of manillion. So that is how fast mining speed 9 is, and you can see it makes cobblestone because it's just a normal pickaxe. But now we're going to add some modifiers. So let's see, what do I want this to do? Well, I want it to auto smelt. I want it to have, um, be sharper. And I want it to have this. So let's also go back into the tool forge. This is where you're going to modify all your tools and plop that in there. Now, as you can see, it, the base modifiers is three. So we can add these three right now if we want. But... What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to, like, to get another modifier, because if you have zero modifiers left, you can't add this modifier, right? So you're going to want to take one diamond, and then look for a gold, uh, oops, not someone I wanted to do. Oh, yeah, whatever, we can do that. Uh, gold block. And we'll find the normal gold block. And then we have the gold block, and we can go in here, and we can take the gold block and the diamond. And remember, we had three. Now you can see we have four. So we now we can add the moss. So that takes away a modifier. The diamond, that takes away a modifier. The, and the lava crystal, which takes away a modifier. So now, we look on this. It's got auto smelt. It's got the diamond. And it's got auto repair. So this is probably what my pickaxe looks like. It's really good. But we have one modifier remaining because of that golden diamond block. See, if we, if we didn't have that, it would have zero modifiers remaining and we couldn't add it now. So always have that first. Let's see what else we could put. Uh, we could put uh, we could put the silky jewel, which makes silk touch, but we can't because we already have the auto smelt. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a emerald, and this is gonna add more uh, more durability, 50% more. So I was gonna I was gonna add the redstone for uh, for uh, haste, which would make it much faster, but I feel I, I feel otherwise that I'm gonna add an emerald. So we can put this in here and add the emeralds, and you can see that instead of Instead of 2000, uh, 2059, we now have 3088. So that is pretty good. 3088 uses. So this is our pickaxe, and now let's compare speeds now. Let's uh, put down some stone. Uh, just like this. Just make a couple layers in here. And uh, let's see how much the it has increased in changes we see in... Uh, in, uh, in this so let's let's start mining as you can see it's about the same speed but it makes stone now and uh, and because that's because we put the auto smelt on and after this I'm gonna check the uh, the mining speed that we have and if it's the same that'll make sense because we didn't add anything that adds speed if we had added redstone which adds haste we would have we would have been much faster so let's go look in the tool forge and here and it Yep, it's still mining speed 9. So that 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 uh, makes sense. So now that we now we have a pickaxe. Now you can do this with many tools. You can make uh, you can make a sword and this is a broadsword, the default sword. Uh, damage moderate, ability block and durability high. So this is just kind of a uh, just a basic sword. So that's what uh, that's what that is. Now I'm not going to make a sword right now because I've shown you how to make a tool and you can experiment on your own time. So that, uh, that uh, we've made our cast, we've made our, uh, our patterns, we've made our uh, basic, uh, basic materials into uh, parts. And that'll wrap up the making of tools section. And that is all three sections. So I hope you uh, enjoyed part one.
of the Tinker's Construct tutorial. Uh, I know this has been kind of a long video, but um, it's it's a it's a big mod. So um, I hope you enjoyed and um, learned something on how to make tools. And look, f uh, make sure you watch next episode, which is going to be the advanced tool making, and I'm going to show you how to make uh, strategic weapons and uh, different ones that you can make. So thanks for watching, guys, and uh, I hope to see you in the next part of this video. I'll see you then, guys. See you later.